I was thinking about words and how they're being tampered with. They're not exactly taking them away, but words are being given alternate meanings and, th- and they're being overused and misused. You know, you know, words like, well, you know, well, pronouns, let's, let's start there. Uh, you know, they, them, he, she, her, him, all of that stuff that's going on. We know what those words mean. We know what he means and we know what she means. You know, we know what her and him and they and them. They've got meanings that they've had for hundreds of years. But now we're being invited or even coerced into using them differently. We're being asked to apply them subject to a person's own choice. That I could choose to be she or her. And a woman could choose to be him and his. I don't get this because it's just the outer edge of the misuse of language and it causes people to trip up. People make mistakes inevitably around the whole uh, gender debate. It's deliberately set traps. I don't really trust the extent to which it's meant to help anyone. I think on the contrary, it's supposed to catch the unwary. It's to make us feel as if because we don't comprehend what's going on and we're too frightened to open our mouths in certain circumstances for fear of making the kind of mistake that can draw down all sorts of abuse and criticism. And this is happening across the piece. Words like racist are being misapplied. Anything and everything is racist now. Transphobe is being misused. Transphobe specifically and precisely means someone with a a hatred of or a fear of trans people. That's what that that's what that means. But if you open your mouth in the context of that debate, there are all manner of innocent things that a person can say that will have them labelled as transphobic. Uh, misogynist is out there. Everything's misogyny, especially in relation to the trans debate. Right wing. Now, anyone that's my age knows what right wing used to mean. But anything and everything is right-wing now. Anything and everything is racist. The English countryside is racist. Being good at maths is racist, according to the new orthodoxy. And, And if you think that doesn't make sense, and if you think you're going mad because you don't get it, it's because that's precisely what it's supposed to do. It's sold as though it's making easier the lives of others, minorities, but it's not. That's not why it's happening. It's there specifically to catch out the likes of us and better yet, to make us just not talk about things. It's easier to be silent than to risk making a career ending mistake in the context of certain debates. And there's nothing trivial about this because words, you know, the word that that two volume dictionary there and indeed the, the full fat, multi-volume Oxford English Dictionary it, it contains well over half a million words and they are the foundation of how we communicate with one another and our ability to communicate in that way is uniquely human being able to have a shared understanding of the meanings of words is the basis upon which we build conversations and relationships and society and civilization. It all comes from being able to have a shared understanding of words. It comes right down to having a shared reality. You know, once upon a time when I was growing up, there was just reality. There was an understanding of the world around us. People had a, 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 a more in-depth and a, and a shallower understanding, let's say, of reality, but we were all living in the same reality. But now there are, it feels that there are multiple realities rubbing along uncomfortably besides one another and you can't just take it for granted that the person that you bump into is any longer living in the same reality as you and the and the that which gets lost in the translation between those two realities is yet another way in which people or another reason uh, for people feeling less inclined to engage for fear of saying the wrong thing that our definitions of male and female man and woman boy and girl are being changed out from under our feet is not trivial and it's not to be taken lightly and so I have 
I have increasingly, I've developed this, it's almost a fantasy really. You know, I wanted, I, I, I had pointed these out. My wife got these in a, in a local Oxfam bookshop. Oxfam bookshops are fantastic because you get all sorts of uh, old, old publications, old volumes that you would, well, you would be able to find them online, of course you would, but, you know, broadly speaking, those second-hand bookshops are absolute gold mines now because this book, this this was published in 1979, I think, this edition. And I feel I can trust that. I feel it's it dates to a period before the madness settled in. And increasingly, I'm looking for old books, books from the time before. And it's not just books. If I had, if I could make my fantasy a reality, I would have an aircraft hangar full of old books, old films, old old films, actually canisters of film, and I would have old VHS and even old DVDs, and I would just stockpile them, because where you have the physical entity, the book, the the LP, the long playing record, or the or the music cassette or the VHS tape, or the Betamax, or the DVD, or the mini disc, or whatever. You've got it in your hands. And that which you have now is not going to be altered without you knowing about it. And I would fill shelves and warehouses full of old stuff to put it beyond the reach of change. Because if you get all of your uh, music from Spotify or some other streaming service... And if you get all of your films, even watching old films on a, a streaming platform like Netflix or, or Amazon Prime or whatever, I'm telling you now, you've got no way of knowing if the version you are watching is the version that was the concept of the director. Let's say it's a film from the 40s or the 50s or the 70s or the 90s. You've got no way of knowing as you watch it on one of those streaming platforms that you're watching the unadulterated original. And I know that sounds like another conspiracy theory, but it preoccupies me that in a hundred years' time, if you were to buy a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird, or if you were to get it on your Kindle, or whatever platform you're reading it on, or if you were to have it as an audiobook, you'd have no way of knowing. You, you might not even question whether you were getting the story that Harper Lee meant to tell. Because in these corrupted, perverted times... A story like that could be altered for all sorts of reasons because it deals with race at the basis of it. And if, if To Kill a Mockingbird, if Harper Lee's narration of that idea that she had in her head, if it's no longer deemed uh, morally appropriate, if it doesn't tick the boxes of today's morality, it could be altered, edited, changed, and you wouldn't even know it. So I'm increasingly... My, my, my house, my... my my wife is, is in, lives in fear of what I'm going to buy next because I stack around me as many copies of old books as I can get my hands on because I want to know that they're safe and I want to know that the words that are in them are in the original order that the author had in mind. And if I buy old films, it's because I want to reassure myself that if it's a film directed by John Huston, then it remains the film that John Huston oversaw and put out for our viewing audience I don't want some sanitised, altered, edited corrupted version of it and so what I'm thinking about now is that if, if it's like Fahrenheit 451 you know the, the sci-fi novel about a time when books are being burned Fahrenheit 451 is the temperature at which paper combusts and it, it becomes incumbent upon people to take care of stories because they're being, they're being deleted, they're being taken away and so that's my that's my my clarion call because books and films and music are some of the bedrock of our civilization, and ultimately they're made out of words and words and the meanings of words and the definitions of words are being changed all around us they're shimmering in front of our eyes like heat haze or a mirage and if we don't pin them down now and remind ourselves what words actually meant we won't properly be able to communicate with one, with one another and that is not a future in which I want to participate.